I've had a few questions recently about split gray printing and uh, why would you use it, etc., etc. A few pers a few um, private messages, and also some comments on my other videos. So um, I thought I'd do a quick video on split gray printing, why I use it, and how I use it. So in my particular photographs, I do like a punchy print. I like I like my blacks to be black and my midtones and the whites and the highlights. I do like contrasty prints, so I use um, my filter set to create more contrast in my images. And I'll show you a bit more of that in the darkroom, but um, just for an example, I've set this small scene up here, which, as you can see, not the glasses, they're mine for looking through the camera. I've got a white lamp, yeah, the white diary, white lamp, blackboard, some pencils here, and a little bit of darker white at the back where the wall is, uh, a roll of FP4. So we've got, we've got some nice tones going on here, so I'm gonna take a few photographs using my Nikon F90X. So what I'm hoping to get from this photograph is I don't want my highlights to be blown out and I don't want the blacks to be jet black that you can't see them. I, need, I want to get detail in, in, in this photograph. So the idea of using the contrast filters is going to give me a much better tonality range on this, on this composition here, on this photograph that we're going to make. So um, let's go ahead, let's take these photographs, I'll develop the film, we'll get in the dark room and we'll have a look at what we've got. Okay, so I've developed the film now, we're back in the dark room, and I've just put uh, the negative on the enlarger and projecting it on the baseboard. And I've got a complete range of tones here. You can see uh, the black matte board at the back here is, is very dark. You can see the black on the camera, the white on the lamp, the pencils, and probably the only part that's gonna give me trouble in this print is gonna be the diary, which um, the skylight was coming down and it's completely um, blown out. We're going to try and um, make this picture without using any dodging and burning. So this is the area we're going to be having to look at first. So let's do a few test prints without any filters and see what we can do, we'll see what we can come up with with the diary and hopefully try and get some detail uh, in, on the page. Okay, so this is the results from our first test strip. There's no filters on this at all, by the way. So The first test strip I did of three, incre uh, three second increments. We've got three, six, nine, and 12. And it decided that um, the diary page uh, exposure was best at six seconds. So I did an overall test strip at six seconds. And I'm happy with the page. I've got detail in it. And uh, we've got the writing on the page as well. You can just see the camera here. But unfortunately, the rest of the image it's just got too much contrast going on. So what I need to do is, I'm gonna do another test strip now with a uh, low contrast filter, which is the zero field, number zero filter. And I'm gonna do the same test strip with that and see how much of the contrast we can hold back, but keep how much detail we can keep in the, in the diary. Okay, and here's the test strip now with the, with the contrast zero filter in. And uh, you can see I've done this in increments of four. So looking at this test strip, I'm looking again at the detail in the diary, and also I'm looking at the contrast around the rest of the image. So I can see I've got a flat contrast here which I can work with, but I've also still got detail in the book just here. So I'm gonna go for eight seconds, a test strip now for eight seconds with a contrast zero filter in. So okay, this has become our fourth test strip, and I burnt this for eight seconds with a contrast zero. filter and you can see we've managed to keep detail in the diary as much as we can anyway and now our shadow details or our blacks in, in particular are now very muddy so we need to now pull the blacks out and this is how when we start now using the higher filter so I'm going to start with a contrast 5 filter I think if I split grade this and go for eight seconds with contrast zero and eight seconds with grade five, the blacks are gonna to go too black, but I'm gonna try it anyway. But my gut feeling says to me eight seconds with 
grade zero filter and four seconds with grade five. But uh, let's, let's do the two and we'll see. Okay, so you can see this, uh, these next two test strips I've done, you can see it starting to come together. This was the split grade at eight, eight seconds with uh, contrast zero for eight seconds and a contrast five for eight seconds. We've got the book, detail okay, but we've lost detail in the camera and the film. This time we've done uh, another split eight seconds with the zero filter, which was our initial test. And this time we've halved the contrast five filter to four seconds. Now you can see we started to get some detail in the camera and the film as well, and we've kept the detail in the book. So this is the timings I'm happy with, and I'm gonna go for a print at eight seconds contrast zero and four seconds with contrast five and see how the overall image looks. Okay, so that's, uh, I've just done a final print now. This was um, the very first test strip we did and there's no filters on this. This is just six seconds all the way across and I've got the diary and the lamp exposed nicely. It's not blown out, but the rest of the image is too contrasted. We can't see no detail in the camera at the bottom. So this is where the split grade or the, or the, or the uh, contrast filters came into play was for me to be able to control the contrast and keep my highlights. Um, so the next print above that, now when we come up to this print, you can see now I've controlled the contrast more. The, uh, you can see more of the camera and the back wall isn't as uh, dark as the original image. So on this one where we use the contrast zero filter for eight seconds and the contrast five filter for four seconds, I've been able to control the contrast more and keep the highlights from blowing out. So that's how I'd use split grading in a situation, in a scenario like this. And of course I set this up purposely so I've got highlights and I've got these dark areas as well. To, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to control, but you can see we've managed it by using split grading. And here we've got both of the prints together. So you can see the contrast is much more, is much more the uh, print is much more darker on this, on this image without using any uh, filters whatsoever. And with this one we use the filters We've got more pleasing tones and more tonality than we have here. So there you go. Hopefully I've answered your questions about split grading. You know, it's all personal preference and how, how you do it is going to be completely different to how I do it. This is how I do it. It works for me. And uh, I know the formula that I use and I'm used to it. So there may be other videos on YouTube on how to do it differently. But uh, these are the filters that I've been using, which is the Ilford Multigrade filters. And they go just underneath the bulb, not underneath the lens. I haven't got any underneath the lens ones, so I use these ones. But um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you've learned something from it. As I said, it's all personal preference at the end of the day and how someone else does it is different to how I do it, but it all works the same way. So um, yeah, keep printing and uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>